Okay, so I've made these rasters, and what I have is near to shore and far from shore, right? And I used uh, five miles as kind of my, my limit. I probably should have used nautical miles, but it's okay. It's just an experiment. And, um, you know, if I wanted to double check, I could toss my mainland on there. And I see, aha, yes, my near far is, is the distance from the mainland. Very good. Um, I've also made a crowded sparse raster, which is a classification of um, from the AIS data that we got. And um, that shows us places that we consider to be too crowded for fun fishing. And 10 represents places that are not that crowded and are more ideal for fun fishing. So we really want to look at places that are both 1 and as well as 11, right? Kind of where those places intersect. But we want to know about the whole variety of options. We don't really want to create um, just an intersect where we only get the 10s and the 1s. I'd like to see all of them together. So I'm going to just symbolize these and use some transparency to show you what I mean. So I'm going to go to my crowded sparse um, layer, hit properties. I'm going to change the style here under the pseudo color. And um, what I'd like to do is add a value because I know that 10 is my uh, sparse area and that's supposed to be good. So let's make that green for good. And I have another value which is 20 and that's supposed to be um, crowded which is not as ideal. That's kind of, you know, we'll say that's bad. I don't like that. So I'm going to make that yellow because it's not as good. So I say OK. And there I've got my raster shows me um, sparse and crowded, right, based on the, the values 10 and 20. Now I want to see near and far. And instead of just having black and white, I want to do near to shore as being more ideal because it's not as far away. So I'm going to make that color um, 1. The value of 1 is going to be blue because that's an attractive color and that's very nice. Um, and then I'm going to add another value for 2 which means far. And let's just make this red because that's far away. We don't really want to go that far. So I say apply. You'll see, okay, yep, red is far, blue is near. But I want to see all four and how they combine together. So just to get a sense of what it's going to look like before I run any tools, I'm going to run the transparency here to about 50% and say OK. And um, oops, I just did that to, <laughs> to the one on the bottom. So now I'm going to mix the two. And I'm hoping you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, this mixture, which is okay, it's a little funny looking, but I'm hoping you can see how now if we add these two rasters together, I've kind of coded them intentionally, 10 and 20 and 1 and 2, so that I can get a unique combination of any one of these, right? 11, 12, 21, 22. But the other thing I had was this constraint, right? I wanted the ideal depth so that we are only looking at locations where um, at the depth that haddock or cod, I guess both haddock or cod would actually be. If I multiply this boolean or kind of binary raster times these added rasters, then the zero will blotch out anything I don't want because zero times anything is zero. And the one will kind of preserve whatever I do want because one times anything equals itself. And I'm going to plug this in the raster calculator and show you what I mean. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I don't really like these um, <laughs> custom color map entry. I'm going to go back into here and just remind myself that this is um, 1, which means, uh, I believe it means near. And this is 2, and that means far. I say OK. And then same here. I had... Uh, 10 which was sparse and 20 which was crowded so I say OK and oops I'm just going to add the numbers in there so it helps me remember what I was talking about 10 is sparse 20 is crowded OK so 
when I add these together and multiply by ideal depth 1 and 0, that's going to give me a new raster that should have 11, 12, 21, and 22, and 0. So I'll go up to my raster calculator, and I'll say um, near far plus crowded sparse times ideal depth. And I'm going to call this ground quality. You know, maybe I put an underscore here. Okay, ground quality. And I say, okay, let's see what comes out. And you might be shocked because the new file looks exactly like the old file. Well, that's not exactly true. The colors are the same, um, black and white, but the values are different, right? 0 to 12 um, with lots of different values and just 0 and 1. This one's binary and this one has uh, kind of these conditional categories that we've made. So I'm going to um, show you uh, a kind of a better color scheme for this new file we've made. And I'll shut off these other ones we don't really need anymore. I'll even remove this because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to leave these two files up because there'll be a nice visual reference for me um, so that when I'm combining these in my head I can kind of keep track um, when I'm doing the symbology. So now I'll go to ground quality here up to the properties to my pseudo color. The first value I'm going to add is 0. right? So this is 0 and the color is going to be um, black. And I'm going to call this um, let's see here. This is bad ground. This is places that is very unlikely to find um, our fish because it's the wrong depth. So, I don't know why I can make that black there. Okay. And the next value I'm going to add is going to be 11. And 11 is going to be sparse plus near means 11, right? So I'm going to say sparse near. And I'll add another value and this will be 12 and this will be sparse and far. Right? Sparse far. And another value uh, I'm going to do 21 which is crowded near. And I'm going to do 22 which is crowded far. Now, I can't have them all be the same color. That's no good. Um, but it is a tricky color scheme. It's kind of bivariate is what we would say. And I'm just going to experiment here. I'm going to say that sparse and near are both the most desirable. I don't really want to go that far offshore, but I don't want to be around a lot of people. So I'm going to make that green for kind of a good feeling. Um, sparse and far. Now that's okay. Not as ideal because you have to go further, kind of further afield, but let's just make that, let's make that okay. I'm not that sad about kind of traveling. I just, I don't really want to be around people. So I'm going to make that like this light blue. And I've made both of the sparse colors kind of light in color just for our own eyes. So crowded in near shore. What are we going to do with that? Well, Let's make that, um, let's just try a yellow feeling. Um, to me, maybe that's still near, right? It's not really far, but it's, it's uh, crowded and it's kind of this loud, uncomfortable color. Crowded and far, let's see, we can do that. It's probably going to be a red or an orange, I would think, because it's the least desirable. Um, it is far, so let's just see. Let's just go with a straight up red, see what that looks like. Now if I hit apply, I get this kind of interesting map. Ah, they're yeah, crowded and far. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. Let's let's take a closer look now. So this is saying, if we put our mainland on the top so we can see what's going on, there's some places like here, right? This is a huge region that is all pretty good ground but it is, um, it's far away, right? Um, up here we've got a lot of good ground that's fairly 
sparse, right? Uh, of course, there might be lots of lobster boats that don't have AIS, and therefore we can't really say that it's really that sparse, but there's no giant um, kind of marine traffic uh, commercial route there. Whereas here, this would all be good ground, but it looks pretty crowded. Um, this water heading down towards Portland is this crowded kind of... Um, get rid of these here, we don't need them anymore. Um, is crowded. I think I actually might change the yellow to an orange because it's I think the yellow's combining with the green a little too much. So I'm gonna go back in here, make this an orange, and I'm gonna make the red um, maybe a little darker to differentiate it from the orange. Okay. Yeah, I'm starting to like the map a little bit better now. Um, what I don't like though, of course, is I don't like the mainland color. Um, I'd like to make a map that shows me kind of the bathymetry and kind of all these ideas just at once and not um, not with so many different colors. So go on to the next video and, we'll, and I'll kind of take you, walk you through making a nice map out of this information.